take you back to your high school college days because I think they played mm-hmm. a tremendous role in your in, in your career and in your success even mm-hmm. if they were considered down years. Um mm-hmm. I truly really believe that your story can inspire people and that's why I'm bringing it up because uh, I don't know if everybody knows your story and um because recently I watched your documentary which you know I I found very interesting and I urge people to watch it. If if you search Sakil Makisic documentary on YouTube it will pop up. Um we can include it later in our story for our viewers to watch it because I think it's really interesting to to watch and you know they they get to learn more about you. Um it it really got me thinking you know about your passion, determination and everything your your mentality to 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 turn things around. Um yeah so obviously for those who don't know when you were 19 you, you served a three month uh, sentence in prison and you were on two year probation for throwing a rock in the house and running away from the police what do you what do you remember from you know the day you threw a rock in someone's house and the police started chasing you um just how lucky i was you know that's the biggest thing i take from the whole thing because a lot of guys don't get to that point and get to have a normal life better yet you know ex- ex- exceed everybody's expectations and it's just kind of one of those things where i was just talking to my wife the other day and she's asking me like you know why did you do it and i'm just like you know you really don't have the answer for stuff mm-hmm. like that you know yeah. especially with it being so long ago it's just like i still don't know to this day but you know everybody goes through tough times in their life for me it was that for somebody else it's something else and now for a lot of people it's the coronavirus and it's really just yeah. how you're going to respond you know with every single thing you know to just keep over overcoming those mountains you know those times were hard but even after i got a little bit of money and success it was times that were just as hard mhm how, how did you how did you deal with that and eventually you know get over it man emotionally i think with everything that happened i just really put my head down and just was grinding and that's what this time reminds me of so much cuz then it all that mattered was basketball I didn't have any distractions and it's kind of like you know right now but that time in my life was the hardest i've ever worked in my life and it's not even close like it was waking up and uh you seen the guy that i shouted out clutch ricardo because he was a yeah. part of it for a year he got to see it we went to the same uh junior college and we were teammates Mm-hmm. and it was just waking up in the morning working out dribbles um go to class come back for lunch you were getting up shots we're getting up shots and at the end of uh, you know after all the classes in the evening we had practice and it was that way for so long for almost two or three years so it's just like how do you not succeed when you work that hard you know at anything yeah. mm-hmm. um in when when referring to your time uh, you know your, your time in prison in the documentary you said that it shaped you into the man you are today What what lessons did you learn in uh, in your time there in prison? I mean it was just a lot of things. It's just like even to this day like I think this is the first year where I finally got comfortable like sleeping in an actual bed, you know, with my wife because it was just so many years where I was sleeping on the couch going from this yeah. guy's house to this guy's house, you yeah. know, guys that were letting me stay and even staying, you know, in jail and you know being uncomfortable to the point where uncomfortable just got comfortable for me. So mm-hmm. it's like for the past four years, I would just want to sleep on the couch, you know, have a really big couch and just sleep there and just sleep there, just because you kind of get attached to that. So mm-hmm. it's like, um, it's a, it's a lot of things that you learn. It's a lot of things that you see living that lifestyle. That when you finally do get an opportunity to make something of yourself, you like, okay, I want to live this way. I don't want to live that way. I want to do this. I know that this works. I know mm-hmm. that that works. And a lot of people just give up so quickly. But yep. when you're sitting in jail for that many days and it's just you and walls it's nothing you can really do it's no where you can run and it just really kind of just shapes your mind into like I don't know into like this schedule or this pattern and once you apply that pattern to anything it usually works you know and that's mm-hmm. just kind of how my mind is just clicked and it, it and it kind of made me a introvert it made me a tim like The only time I really show myself is on my wife's YouTube page or you know when I'm doing lives with you yeah. but Usually I'm just out of the way, you know, I don't really like to do too much or go to many mm-hmm. places. Um but that's just me and that's the that's just how it, you know, that's just what how the way that it turned out, you know. Mm-hmm. And then uh, after 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 that, after your time there, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh you stayed in Seattle in order to pursue your um, you know, your basketball dream and you know, your family had to go back to Indiana. Um mm-hmm. you enrolled at Edmonds Community College, but a year into your studies your best friend passed away. Since mm-hmm. then, 
you you say that in the documentary as well. Uh, mm -hmm. You dropped out of your classes, didn't have enough money, as you mentioned. Now you were sleeping, you know, in uh, cars, in friends' houses, and etc. And uh, you know, and worked for obviously various of jobs. Can you take me back to those days? You know, where was your mindset at that time? <laughs> Man, that was a long time ago. But um, when I think about it, it was just. It was so many opportunities and some I converted on and some I missed. Uh, you know, it was a certain time where I thought I was going to get back into school and it was an NBA player that said he would pay for my school. And then it just came down to it at the last second. He decided not to. And for me, that affected me so much just because I looked up to him so much, you know, um, growing up in the Seattle scene. And I'm not going to say who it was, but, um, yeah. you know, I, that that was just a big blow for me. And after that, I could have quit and been like, oh, man, I'm not going to, I'm not, you know, it's just too hard. It's just this. It's just that. But no, I just kept going. And then, you know, I'm getting back into college. <laughs> it's so crazy because I here I am. I'm working at a furniture store. This is after my first year at community college. I drop out. So mm -hmm. I'm on probation. I have no reason to want to even think that I can go Division One. You know, I'm I'm at the lowest of lowest yeah. points. You I'm working that at in the a documentary as well, and I found it crazy. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it it was just literally an idea that popped in my head. Like maybe I can do this. And once I just started working out, and I got a job, and I got to go to school, and I got to go learn math, and I got to go to math club for eight eight hours because I don't know what calculus is. I you know I haven't done calculus since yeah. high school. And, you know, I'm looking at these problems and I'm like, no, this works. You know, I can I can figure out how to do this. And once you just make up in your mind that you're going to do something and nothing is going to stop you, you're going to fail so many times yeah. in between. You're going to have those times where you're like, I'm not doing this. You're going to have those weeks where you're like, I'm done. But as long as you just keep coming back to it, I'm, I finally got to Arizona State. I was, what, 20, 20 about to be 21. That's unheard of, you know, to yeah. to be like, you know, I'm, I'm going to go play for one of the biggest yeah. divisions you know, in, in college basketball. And, and it, was, had, it was crazy. And before you went to Arizona State, correct me if I'm wrong, you had a, a 3.7 GPA in, uh, right? You, you the, were on the, top of your classes. You were doing everything you could in order to, you know, get to Arizona State and play D1 basketball. I don't, I don't know if my mom's watching, but in high school, I was always, you know, I was honors classes. I was, my mom did not allow me to not be good in school. It yeah. just got to the point where I got old enough. I was like, I'm good at basketball. I'm not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. And um, she could she could kind of see me starting to spiral out of control. But once I got to Edmonds, it wasn't the fact of is the work hard. It was just if I was going to do it or not. And, mm -hmm. um, this, you know, it was 10 years ago. But just that split decision in time to say I'm on probation. Every week probation officers have to come to my home and check to see oh. if there's alcohol in my home. I have to go and visit them and I have to take drug tests to, and they have to like, they're always watching me. I can't get into any trouble. You know, I have to go to classes. I have to go to practice and on the court. I have to have the best season that this, you know, league has ever seen. Crazy. And all of those dominoes just fell into, um, it just fell in order. And the craziest part is what people don't understand is after my season at junior college, I literally sat on the computer in the, um, in the lobby of one of the apartment homes on campus. And every day I'm shooting my highlight tape out to every single college. I'm going to colleges. I'm looking at the assistant, the weightlifting coach, the wow. head coach. I'm sending all of my emails out. And this is every single time I do this is 200 times that I have to, you know, send out, click this name, click this name, click this name. So this is taking me an hour and a half, two hours every day. And my mm -hmm. best friend, you know, he can attest because he's sitting there with me. And he's like, oh, don't forget this school. Don't forget this school. So we're just sending this out. And coaches are replying. And they're like, you know, who, you know, your, your highlights are amazing. How many years do you have? And at the time, I only had one year of eligibility because I was so old. But um, I didn't even get to Arizona State because of that. I got mm -hmm. in contact with a guy at Division Two, which is lower than Division One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. just randomly, because he's seen my persistence, he reached out to a coach at Arizona State, and that's wow. how I got on to Arizona State. It wasn't because I sent out all these highlight tapes, but if I didn't send out these highlight tapes, I would have never had the opportunity for him to see yeah. me for, or if I would have never made the tape, I sat on a computer and I made my highlight tape that was 20 wow. minutes long. I had to download cutting. This is before I knew anything about Premier Pro. Insane. And I'm sitting in front of the computer, my eyes are burning, and I'm just three o'clock in the morning, next day, four o'clock in the morning. You know, this is happening over 10 straight days. I'm like, oh my God. Just I, imagine I, if you didn't do that. 
it, it, exactly. But people don't understand. It was hard. It was so hard. <laughs> and it was so easy to say, I'm just going to, you know, see if somebody's going to come find me. Mm -hmm. And after, after you arrived in Arizona, however, and, you know, you got your chance, how, how did that feel? How did your life change? I wasn't ready, man. I wasn't ready. It was too much, too fast. Like, even to this day, if I could go back with what I know now, I would be in the NBA. <laughs> But, you know, at that time, it was like my confidence level just shrunk. I went from being the best player unanimously, yeah. you know, in a, in a league to being on a much bigger platform with, you know, I'm playing with Jahi Carson, Jermaine Marshall, mm -hmm. Jordan Pachinski, all of these guys. I'm like, oh, my God, you guys have all had names. I'm going up against Rondé Hollis-Jefferson, Nick Johnson, wow. you know, um, you know, Aaron Gordon. I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, your your story is uh, your story is uh, incredible. Yeah, I guess. And hold up, Ray Mac, Ray Mac, Ray Mac, just Ray Mac. What's good, G Blakes? But Ray Mac, you know, he's uh, uh <laughs> he's playing in China now, but he was in Europe. Yeah, he says you're, you but, were uh, supposed to come to Detroit. It was funny because his dad was recruiting me to Detroit. I go to his father's house. It's this big blow up of him. I think Gatorade Player of the Year, and then his dad calls him, and, and Ray's like. Yo, you need to come to Detroit. So at that point, I'm like, it's signed, sealed, and delivered. I'm going wow. to Detroit. And I'm in the airport, and I'm like, okay, send me the papers. I'm about to come. I literally wow. take off, and I land in Seattle, and I say, something doesn't feel right. Like, I know I can. I know there's bigger opportunities out there. And but, then Arizona happened. And then Arizona State happens. Maybe a month later, they call me, and they're like, yo, you just got to pass these classes? And I was wow. like, Yeah, you know, and that's wow. what, that was just betting on myself. But not to say there was anything wrong with going to Detroit because Ray went to Detroit, then he got drafted to the NBA, but he was yeah. also a hell of a player. Yeah. What life advice can, uh, you know, can you give to our younger audience right now? After everything you've been through, ups and downs. Uh, it's super hard to accomplish what you want to accomplish in life. <laughs> There's no... There's no easy way to do it. You know, life isn't a video game. It's really, really hard. And that's why I stay out of the way. You know, I'm just always doing something in my home. I'm not out in public. I'm chasing my dreams every single day, you know, just at my house. And it's just like, I know how hard it takes for, I, if I want to start this, you know, say it's a YouTube channel, I know how hard that's going to be. If I want to start a podcast, I know how hard that's going to be. If I want to start anything, I know how hard it's going to be. And I think kids are just got it confused on, thinking it's really easy, but it's super hard to, to excel in something and be great at it. Mm -hmm. 